everybody. Hi uh, to those new people uh, coming here today, spending some of your free time. My name is Serge Mazen. I work for Janssen Pharmaceutica, a pharmaceutical company in the north of Belgium, as part of Johnson & Johnson. And it's a large healthcare company. In Johnson & Johnson, we have a spe specific department, about 100 people, uh, called Global Public Health. And it is our mission to bring medication to those people who need it most, to those people who cannot access medication like you and I do uh, have access to medication in the Western world. So that is our mission, and we want to do that in a scalable and sustainable way. That means that it's not about a donation, it's not about we give you a million pills, we give you a uh, 100,000 blankets, no. We want to set up <coughs> Excuse me. We want to set up projects with local governments, with local organizations, NGOs, and teach and train people how to deal with a certain issue. And, and so that when we uh, retract and we go to onto another project, that people actually can continue uh, serving their, their people locally. So that is, our, that is basically our mission as the Global Public Health Department uh, within Johnson & Johnson, our mission is to have impact on people's lives directly. That's it. We have a few focus areas. We have HIV and tuberculosis as a focus area. HIV because we have a long history with developing medication in, H in HIV. Now, what we see happening is that there's about 37 million people in the world who are HIV infected. That's not a lot compared to other diseases, but still there's a problem that it, it is not ruled out yet. There's a lot of uh, money, resources necessary to get it completely out of the world. On top of that, out of those 37, 25 million people live in low and middle income countries, say Africa plus Southeast Asia, 25 million. The good news is that more and more people get on treatment. So as if you look at a graph where you see people getting treatment for HIV, year over the year, there's an increase. So that's good news, you say. Yes, but however, resistance is looming around the corner. Because there's an issue, let me explain. So if you're sick, you're being infected, the viral load, the amount of virus in your body is high. And you get medication, and if the medication works well, then the viral load could goes down until a level, perhaps, that is not detectable anymore. Your, your viral load is suppressed. That is a moment where, basically, the disease is kind of transformed in a chronic disease. You can live a normal life. There's no risk of passing it on anymore to someone else. There's one condition. You have to take your medication as prescribed every day, day in, day out. Now, if you start to feel better, then maybe there is a moment where you say, ah, I feel well, I forget, I have forgot about my medication, or I'm going for a weekend to here or there, or I have to do something, and you forget your medication, and that's where the risk looms around the corner. Because that's precisely the moment when the virus can replicate again. You give the opportunity to the virus to replicate again. And the virus is notorious for making a lot of errors in that replication process, making a lot of mutations. And it's precisely these mutations that can be resistant against your current therapy, against your current regimen. So if you fail to be adherent to your treatment, you run the risk of developing resistance. And that's also why the more people that are on treatment, the bigger risk there is that people are not compliant with their treatment, the bigger risk there is that resistance looms around the corner. Okay, so what if that happens? What do you have to do? Well, you have to do some viral load testing. People get all of a sudden, they are on treatment, they did well, they get sick again. You have to do viral load testing. How much virus is in the body? Maybe the person has, bec has become resistant. You have to do viral uh, drug resistance testing, and you have to switch medication. Now these things are very costly. The testing is costly, the resistance testing is costly, 
and the second and third line medication is actually more costly than the first line medication. Now remember I spoke about we're looking into low and middle income countries, countries that do not have the resources to put all of their people that are HIV patient on those costly things. So that's why these countries have all the interest in keeping their patients on first-line medication. That's why we, as global public health, have all the interest to know and understand where resistance is developing and what are the driving factors to keep these people on first-line treatment. That's when we can perhaps turn knowledge into actionable items. A classic example I want to use to give you a, a, a flavor of what I'm talking about. You can yourself decide not to take your medication and then you are not compliant. But if you need to go 50 kilometers to a pharmacy to get your medication and that pharmacy ran out of stock, you go back home, you don't go the next day, you go, the, you, we, we lose that person for about four weeks or even more until they get back to the pharmacy uh, to see if their medication is available. So at that time they have become involuntarily incompliant. And so that is a driving factor that has nothing to do with the disease, but has to do with politics, situation, whatever, from the country that is known to be a driving factor for the risk of uh, resistance emerging. So that is why we, from our mission, we want to know where are these hotspots and what are some of these factors where we potentially can help work or transform this knowledge into actionable items, preventive actions towards the governments, towards these patients, work with the healthcare workers uh, who, who serve those patients, work with other stakeholders like WHO or PEPFAR. PEPFAR is an organization that basically funds the medication to, uh, I think so, to, to, uh, to the countries. So to work with these stakeholders to know and understand where the problems are and how big they are. And so in that, in that attempt, uh, we, uh, we are doing a project as a, as a group, as a department, but a few years ago we have had with uh, Philip and his organization, we've had the opportunity to do a dengue hackathon, almost kind of the same map hotspots of dengue, another disease. It was quite successful, and now we are here again to tap into your talent, uh, on working on the data, to tap, tap into the collective wisdom of this group here to try to uh, find contacts who can help us lead to data. Um, as a matter of fact, from the Dengue Hackathon, we learned about an organization who is literally two villages down the road from where our company is, that an organization that was working on Dengue. We didn't know they exist. They didn't know we, well, they didn't know we existed, but they didn't know we were working on dengue. And today we have actually a signed contract with them and we're doing the attempt of the hackathon in an 18 months project now. And so that's why it is important that what Philippe says, we're not looking for the, the perfect solution here. We're looking for opportunities, um, uh, talent, we're looking for perhaps data sources. If, if me and my colleagues, we look on the web, there's just a few hands all together, but look at this group. If all of you look on the web, that's many, many more people that can uh, search the web for potential publicly available data. Perhaps through the, the, the hackathon here, we get to know new, or new organizations, new contacts, where then we can continue to work with to try to tackle the problem. So that's basically why we are here today. We're not looking for that perfect solution. As a matter of fact, maybe later today I can uh, tap in a few other ideas that do not necessarily play into that resistance purely, but that can help us lead to get there as, as somewhat easier problems, if you like. So with that, I'm going to conclude here, Philippe, and uh, well, we're here for the, the rest of the evening until the alarm goes off, I've learned last time. Uh, so if you have further questions, please come to see me. Excellent. Thank yeah? you very much.
Thank you.